Hi, my name is Kamiko and I'm from Edmonton, Alberta. Recently, I was diagnosed with ADHD and I realized that a lifetime of deeply passionate hobbies were more than that. They were my hyperfixations and I want to share them with you. <sighs> Hello and welcome back to my hyperfixations. I am doing a hyperfixation that honestly I kind of want to get out of. I feel a little bit trapped by. It has been ongoing. You can't really just like quit this one naturally. And that is plants. <laughs> so like every millennial or Gen Zer or, you know, younger aged person, I've made the bold and easy, but also not easy choice to ditch kids and go for plants. So <laughs> I went through a really strong plant phase I used to have probably at least 40 plants in my house um, and then COVID hit. I went through a major depresso and looking after myself was a little bit more than I could handle, let alone looking after that many plants. So naturally the great purge happened um, and a lot of them perished. Um, another statistic lost to the pandemic, but <laughs> I still have some that are clinging on. They're still in the house just can't let them die you know like if it's unintentionally that they have to perish it's fine but I can't intentionally just let them go so I still have a ton of plants and I want to walk you through some of my favorite plants to take care of as well as doing a little bit of repotting because I have some propagations that need a new home so first I want to talk about some of my favorite plants to take after to take after, to take care of and look after. Um, I am a pet parent. I have a dog, I have two cats. So all of the plants that I look for and I need in my life need to be pet friendly. Um, I used to love lilies. I used to think lilies were the coolest plant in the world and then found out that they were really heckin' poisonous to cats and I haven't been able to have a lily ever since. It's, it's very, very sad, but there are lots of like really pet friendly plants that are available. So the first one, I'll pop it up from right beside me here, is called a ZZ plant. And if I don't know like the full scientifical, geological, geographical name for each plant, I'm sorry. I do know the abbreviation. So this one is a ZZ plant. Um, it's great. Like I said, all of the ones that I show you are going to be pet friendly. Um, these guys, so hard to kill. Like, you need to be putting in a lot of work to kill them. <laughs> they are really great if you have a low light space um, or if you just have like fluorescent lighting or like not a lot of sunlight that comes in. They still do really well in that kind of environment. You need to water them like, I honestly don't even know what I water this one, maybe once a month if I remember to. And it is still going strong like it's a happy little plant i love it um the way that they blossom or bloom put out new shoots is really cool they'll like stick out a little one of these sprays you can see here they kind of look like asparagus um, and they'll stick one of those out and then they'll start growing the, the leaves off i actually have a new one coming in here and you can see the leaves will kind of slowly unfurl which is really cool i'll just hold it closer to make sure you can see it is this one here it's got his little unfurling leaf pattern. Uh, so I really like these ones. I think they're great. Um, there's actually several spots where my cats have attacked the leaves, unfortunately for the plant, but the cats are all fine. So I really recommend these guys. They're so fun and they like, they like to grow wild. They are a little bit of a slower grower though. So if you do like the instant dopamine hit of seeing like your green thing grow and flourish and thrive, um, this guy might not be the guy for you. Next plant, um, let's go with this big boy right in front of me. I'll save my favorite for the end. So next plant is a spider plant. So spider plants are probably one of the easiest plants to keep alive as the internet has agreed upon um, they're really another plant that you can just forget about they do really well with inconsistent watering um, they like to bloom really nice and big and full like this one 
when they're happy and that's kind of you can tell what you've got an unhappy one if they're like a little straggly and they're not putting out a ton of leaves and stuff um, and at that point perhaps you should diagnose what could be going wrong um, I know a lot of people will see brown tips show up on their spider plant and that can be either a sign of overwatering or underwatering and it's so funny because it's like please just tell me what you need you know tell me what you need it's like talking to your partner or to like a toddler you're like I can see that you're freaking out I can see that you're unhappy I need you to use your words to tell me what you want and the spider plants like well it could be one of either of these two things and the solution to either one um, will kill me if you get it wrong so and you're like oh my god all right cool cool but if you do start to see the browning tips you're either overwatering or you're underwatering and you can honestly you can just trim them off and then readjust from there on out one of my favorite things about spider plants is that they are really like quick to put out new plants if you are interested in propagation so this one's on the ground i'll lift it up here so you can see a bit better but it's got a ton of little spider babies so if you look here these little guys hanging off the end are little baby spider plants that could be planted to become a new spider plant. Um, and so the way that you propagate these guys is actually really easy. You wait for like these ends, I'm gonna put it back down. You wait for one of these ends to kind of mature and you can tell they're matured. You'll start to see them grow their own like roots and stuff on the end. So all of these ones are still kind of babies. But once they start getting their own little roots on the end, you would literally just like break it off, put it in water. Once its roots start growing and getting thicker, then you could plant it. And so these ones are really, really easy to take care of. They're a really great plant if you want to give people gifts. Like if you really like to give people propagations and plants and things like that, the spider plant is a really good way to go. I will say though, if you have cats, these are cat safe but they're also like cat attractive, you know? So cats can get like a little bit high when they're eating the spider plants. So for me, if I have my spider plants anywhere that my cats can get them, they go hard. They absolutely will shred these bad boys up. So I either need to put mine away or I acknowledge that they can be sacrificial plants and <laughs> I put them out so that the cats are distracted from other more valuable plants and will attack the spider plant instead. So if you are a fellow cat owner, just something to be like a little bit aware of as you go um, because they could, you know, prove to be a fatal attraction to your cat. By fatal, I just mean fatal to the plant, not fatal to your cat. Your cat will be totally fine your plants, however, maybe not so fine. Next plant, we're zooming, we're zooming, is this one here. She's a little crunchy. <laughs> um, I'm still trying to figure out where some of these plants like to be. Um, it's kind of hard to know, honestly. I wish they could talk to you. I wish they could tell you. And like, sometimes you look at the internet and what the internet's diagnostics are saying and you try that out and it doesn't work for you. And you're like, why do I have the freak plant? How come everybody else's plant likes to be in full sun, beam in sunlight and you get crispy and die? Hmm. <laughs> Very puzzling. But this is a, I don't know how to say it, a transcendentia? I'll put it on the screen. Um, and I believe this one is a Nanook variation. Um, so these ones do have kind of like a, a name. Oh, we've got some bits falling off. We can propagate it. I'll show you in a minute. We can propagate it. Um, these ones do have a name that people still sometimes use, but is also kind of problematic. So um, people have called them wandering Jews before. You might hear them referred to as that. Um, but you'll also hear them referred to as wandering dudes. I don't like to use either of those names. Um, just because I feel like they're not great names. They've got not so awesome connotations to them. So I always call it just by like it's sciencey name that I can't pronounce. Um, and I would recommend that you do too because inclusivity and using good language costs you nothing at the end of the day. But yes, yeah, so this one I have, it's got like really pretty purple coloring to it. Like I said, she's a little crunchy cause she, she was in a sun, a sunful window um, and she didn't like that. So, um, sorry, I'm really distracted by all the crunchy leaves now. So this one here, 
is really, really pretty. It's got all of these gorgeous, beautiful leaves on it. Um, and these ones are really nice too, if you like to propagate. So they tend to grow pretty quickly, and that means you can make lots of cuttings off of them. Um, you can see just now we did have a piece fall off. So sometimes she gives herself haircuts and that's totally fine. Um, so what I'll do with this one afterwards is honestly, I'll just put it in a piece of a piece into some water. Um, it'll eventually grow roots. And I'll either put it in a new pot or I'll put it back into this one here. But yeah, this one I really like. It's also a plant that it just grows quickly. I find that I really prefer the quicker growing plants because it gives my brain that good juice. <laughs> um, I find like when I when I don't see a lot of progress and when it's like taking an eternity for a plant to show that it's growing, I kind of lose interest. It makes it harder to take care of for me. So I found that I really like these fast growing ones because they make me happy to see to see them growing and blooming and blossoming and they're less likely to perish if I'm seeing that they're happy and I'm taking good regular care of them. <laughs> um, yeah, so this one is really good for that. Also a plant that doesn't require a ton, a ton of attention. Um, you might notice that's a common theme. I do also like to pick my plants with, I mean, keeping in mind that I have an attention deficit. So I like to pick ones that if I forget about them, if I lose track of time, if they aren't being attended to as regularly as some other plants would need, they're gonna be okay. Uh, I really, I really try and make sure that like my house and the things that are in it are things that I can sustain. Um, and as I said before, sometimes things are sustainable until something pops up and then they're not sustainable and then they all perish and that's okay. But it's also made me a little bit more mindful of like what I can handle and what my capacity is. So all of these guys, really straightforward, easy to take care of. Um, we did a bullet journaling episode before where I talked about some things that I'll track and use my bullet journal for. Um, I've actually done in the past keeping track of when I needed to water plants and when I needed um, to do like any kind of plant maintenance. So that was another way to help me keep on top of it. Um, Cause sometimes I would find if I have to Google every week, how often should I water my spider plant? It was just a barrier and I wouldn't water it. Whereas if I can look in my book and I've written down water spider plant every like seven to eight days, then it, it just makes more sense to me. But that's my own plant methodology. My last plant that I brought out to show you of my favorites is this one here. So this is a pothos. Um, this one is just a regular variety pothos. You can get like a bajillion <laughs> types of pothoses, pothosi, pothi. Um, so this one's just a regular, I believe it's golden pothos. You can get marble queens, neons, there's so many. And pothos are hands down my favorite plant. They are so resilient. Like I have a pothos plant I think I've owned for maybe six years now. It is the longest I've ever owned a plant before. It has been through it. She's been forgotten. She's been in front of cold windows that I've forgotten to close. She's been just literally through the plant ringer um, and she's still alive she's thriving she's beautiful she's got vines that are like 16 feet long it's amazing so if you need a plant that is really 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 hard to kill pothos are where it's at i love them i think they're great they've got like these really gorgeous big leaves um they're a vining plant too so i'll see if i can separate out a vine here this one's all kind of twirly whirlied around itself so they do grow in these really lovely long vines. Um, oh, my leaves are tangled. So they do grow out in like nice vines and they can grow like really, really long, kind of like as long as you want to let them grow. And that's one of the things I really like is to let my vining plants vine. And I think the hanging vines look so pretty and it just makes for like this very like cottage quarry, fairy tale atmosphere when you've got like these lovely long dangling plants. So I, I love pothos. I recommend getting a pothos to anyone I know who says that they want to get into plants but aren't really sure how. This is another plant that is also like not so bonko, easy to propagate, easy to make a lot of, easy to give to other people, but also easy to save from you if you're not the best at plants 
Um, Cause usually what'll happen is they'll start to die off like a little bit higher up the vine. And as, if they're dying off, then you can cut the vine up actually and use it to propagate and kind of have a restart of the plant. If you find that you're kind of, you're killing it, it, things aren't going where you want them to be going. Um, they're kind of a nice do-over plant that way. So I can't speak highly enough of these guys. They're so pretty. Um, they purify your air really nicely. I mean, like all plants do, but these ones make those top 10 lists on the Google telling you what plants are great for indoors. So super duper, super recommend these. I have like a million around my house and because I just keep propagating them, I just keep getting more. It's like a beautiful perpetuating cycle of pothos. Highly recommend. For our next bit, we are going to actually um, be, I'm just gonna move these over here very, very slowly and carefully and half spill them. We are actually going to do some potting of some propagations that I have. So as I mentioned before, um, the way that you can propagate is literally just by sticking into some water. The plant for a lot of these is really simple, really straightforward. You can see that these ones have lovely, long, gorgeous, beautiful roots, which is why we are going to be putting them into some soil now so they can get those sweet, sweet nutrients. Um, I like to save a bunch of random bottles like these ones are just from drinks that I bought at the store <laughs> um, literally all of them I think one's like a kombucha bottle like I just save bottles like a little pack rat and then I use them to propagate all of my plants so we are going to do that I'm just gonna take them out and put them to the side for now we're gonna pray that they don't spill um, it's a little windy outside and I didn't bring another container so happens to the best of us. So da -da -da -da, I have little containers here. I save these whenever I buy new plants. I literally just keep the old plant stuff. So I've got a few. We have three that we're going to be replanting. I think two of these are actually the same type of plant so I might put them in the same one but they do have lots of roots so actually maybe I'll put them in their own and see what happens here. Hmm, gonna mull it over for a second. Yeah, we'll put them in their own, each one of them. Sorry, I've got the sniffles. I'm coming down with a cold, which is so frustrating because it's like, it's springtime. Just let me not be sick, you know? And I grab the dirt. I put it very inconveniently far away, as you do. So I'm just using indoor potting soil mix here. Um, I'm gonna scoop some. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just going to dump some into this box and then we can just use what's in the box and then we can dump it out later if we need to back into the bag. I just find that it's a little bit easier than trying to dink around with stuff. So we've got a box of dirt, we've got our container, and we've got our little plant. So I'm just going to make sure we're in frame on this camera, or mostly in frame. I'll move a little more this way about the sniffles. So what we're gonna do is just load some dirt into the bottom of this and then we've got actually two stems in here so I'm gonna pull these guys out and look at all of those roots. They're so pretty. See look at them. They're so long. So this is probably a couple months worth. You don't have to let them get this long if you don't want to. Like a few inches is fine. Um, I just went and quite honestly forgot about them. So <laughs> they got to be quite long. So I'm just gonna untangle them a little bit and we are going to put these roots down into our little container. So I'm pushing the roots down there. I'm gonna put a little layer of dirt as well just to separate the roots a little bit. I don't want them to be right in each other's space. I don't know if that does anything. I think it's just a preference point on my part. And then I'll put this one in as well. It's a little bit Jenga-y sometimes trying to figure out how you can get everything into the pot. Okay. I'm sorry if this isn't showing up great on camera, but to give you the closed captions, I am just shoving roots into a container. <laughs> then we're gonna scoop more dirt on top. And I like to not pack it down, but I do like to make sure that it is like semi-decently full of dirt. Um, like I said, I think 
Maybe I didn't say it. This is just indoor potting mix that I'm using. So made for indoor plants. So I'm gonna pack that down a little bit. And then the final step is going to be to wet with some water. Oh, sorry, sniffles. So you always want, when you are potting plants, or propagating plants, or repotting plants, or whatever, after you've got it in there, you do wanna make sure that you thoroughly wet the water, or <laughs> wet the water, wet the soil that they're in. Um, that way their roots can kind of like you know, reach out, look for the water, get accustomed to the space, and they aren't just being like sucked dry by the dry dirt that you've just put them in. So I'm gonna pour a little on top. I'm gonna wait for it to absorb. It might take a little minute here. Um, one of the things you don't want to do is if you do have really dry soil like this, you don't just wanna pour your water in really fast. So there's science behind this. I don't know what the science is, but basically it says if you have really dry soil and you pour the water in, it basically just like is too much too fast and it'll just flow off of the top of the soil instead of sinking down into it. So, <laughs> so sorry my sniffles. So if you have really dry soil, you want to pour the water in slowly and let the soil have time to absorb it. Otherwise, you're not actually getting any water through to the bottom of the soil. It's just, it's just there. <laughs> like, the water is just there on top of it hanging out. So, this soil is pretty dry. It is taking like a really long time for the water to go down. It kind of gets hydrophobic, I guess, is the word that I'm looking for here. So, I'm just going to leave it for a bit and we'll move on to our next plant. Um, and we'll kind of just water them in stages. And by the end of it, they'll all have been like pretty thoroughly watered plant. So I have another planter here. I got another, this is another pothos. Um, like I said, I love, 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 love pothos. And this one's got really, really long roots. I might've let it go like a wee scooch too long. Um, it was getting like a little bit unhappy. You can see here, one of the leaves is actually dying. So. I should have repotted it sooner. What can you do? We're doing our best now <laughs> to get it alive and well um, and in business. So no use crying over spilt plants, I guess. We'll do the same thing. We'll load up this container about half-ish full with dirt. We'll put the roots down in, kind of make sure they go all the way to the bottom there and then we'll cover it up with dirt. And this type of pothos, if you're wondering, is a neon pothos. So it's a little bit different than the pothos that I showed you earlier in the big pot. This one is, as the name maybe implies, neon in color. It's like a much more bright green. It's also a little bit more finicky and difficult to take care of. So if you are <laughs> looking for a pothos, um, I wouldn't necessarily recommend a neon pothos just because if you want them to stay like the bright green color you need to have like a pretty specific light circumstance happening um so something to keep in mind just like any breed i guess of anything there are easier kinds there are harder kinds um i would always recommend like a what do they call this one a golden queen one of the easy pothos. <laughs> if you ask anyone at like a greenhouse or wherever it is that you're going, they'll, they'll know how to direct you. Ask an expert. As always, I am not an expert. I'm just a lady who likes stuff. <laughs> who likes plants and things. So I'm actually going to use the water from my other <laughs> plant to water this one because I spilled this one's water. Same thing. We'll pour the water on really slowly so as to not flood this guy. And we'll come back and do this in steps where we want to get all of the water through. All right, I'm just gonna put my last little bit of dirt in here. I think that should be good. Okay, perfect. And we have our last little plant. So this one is one of those um, Nanook plants. She doesn't have quite as many, um, 
what do you call these now, roots, <laughs> as the other ones do. You'll notice they aren't quite as long. They're a little bit more fine. Um, that's totally okay. You can have plants that are a little bit finer and don't have that. So we'll do the same thing where we'll get it half filled with dirt. We'll chuck our roots in and then we'll fill it up the rest of the way with dirt. I grossly underestimated, I think, how much dirt I would need, but that's okay. Or maybe I exactly estimated. I think it might be that. Wow. I've acquired more water um, in the form of a watering can. Very apt of me. I'm actually, I'll put all of our plants back in here together, our new little plant nursery, and I'll give them all a top up on that sweet, sweet H2O action so that they grow. And then, yeah, the thing with propagating plants is you do want to keep the soil like a little bit moist um, just until they're a little bit more settled into planthood, plant parenthood. <laughs> um, it'll just, it'll just make them happier. It'll reduce your chances of them perishing in the propagation process um, because sometimes they can uh, when you put them on into the dirt sometimes they don't like that um, and they perish so you just got to be prepared for it as a plant parent it happens to the best of us happens to the worst of us it just happens but yeah so that is my hyperfixation for today it is plants I hope you have had a really great time watching this series and going through kind of my past hyperfixations and experiences and stuff with me. I've had a really great time sharing it um, and dare I say maybe even growing a little together along the way. Very plant Um But yeah, thank you so much for watching uh, and I'll see you hopefully around somewhere. Goodbye.